Theory of Change and its Use in Impact Assessment from Rashid Lajaj. I'm an Associate Professor of Economics at the University of Los Andes and I'm a SPIA Special Initiative member. We made this video to provide a brief, very practical summary of Theory of Change and how to apply it for an impact assessment. Let's jump straight into our definition of Theory of Change. How does it look like? So first, a theory of change has the goal of defining the impact that the project wants to reach and then thinking of how the various elements of the project, the intervention that the project includes, can result in these impacts. How may this bring the impacts that we're looking for? This typically looks like this kind of table where you have the various stages from the initial activities all the way into the impact it's one typical representation. You could have obviously more complex representation, but that's the, the, the idea. It starts with activities, which are just the activities implemented in the project, what intervention this project includes. From this, one thinks about the output, which is some intermediate product that must directly result from these activities. Then you have the outcome, which is already we are in the benefits some short-term immediate benefits that result from this output. And at the end, we have the impact, which is the real final long-term objectives that we aim to reach with this project. So this is typically called an impact pathway or the causal chain, in the sense that this gives us the pathway from the initial activities to the final impact that one aims to reach with the project. Or the causal chain, because that's it is seen as a causal chain because the activities implies this output, this output should cause the outcome and the outcome should cause the impact. If you think about it this way, this will gives you the chain that can allow you to reach the impact that you hope to reach. Another important element of a theory of change is the set of hypotheses. This is not always included, but it's very important. That tells us what are the conditions for a given activity to result into the next step of that impact pathway. So you would have hypotheses from activities to output, from output to outcome, and from outcome to impact. You should always think of this as going from activities to output is never automatic. Usually you have to make some hypotheses, you need some conditions to be okay for these activities to actually result in the output that you hope. So you want to make these conditions for this to happen very explicit. This, these are the hypotheses that you need in order to obtain the result at the various stages. That will also help you a lot understand later on why things may not happen as you wanted it to happen once you analyze uh, this project. Another practical question is where should I start from in order to fill this table of the theory of change? First, remember, theory of change is not just a table, it's the whole thinking about how your activities will result into the impact that you hope to reach in the project. But practically, at least for me, it works well to start filling first the set of activities that include this project. Usually these are well defined. Then thinking of what are the final impact that this project aims to reach and then going through the various output and outcome so that you think step by step how these activities may result into this impact. And at the end of it, you start thinking about the hypothesis at every stage uh, from activities to output, output to outcome, and outcome to impact. Now we want to see an application of the theory of change and its use for impact assessment. Before this, I need to introduce you to the project that is used as an example. It's a real project called Index-Based Livestock Insurance. IBLI is an, is an innovation that was developed by IRI, Cornell, and University of California, Davis. And now it's an insurance that is a, promoted by private insurance. This insurance aims to protect pastoralists from drought-related losses. The payments are based on an index that is calculated using remote sensing data, NDVI. And this tries to predict the losses of livestock and makes payment when uh, losses are predicted. The annual fee represents 14% of the cattle value. Ibli has been widely adopted in Kenya and Ethiopia, but there are many remaining questions regarding its adoption or disadoption or the long-term impacts of the program. 
So there will be an impact assessment that will try to answer these questions. And we will look at this as an example. You may ask yourself, why doing a theory of change? Well, first, having a common understanding of the impact pathway within the institution or even with your partners really helps having the same goals and making sure that we all understand how we may reach these goals and may, that may make it even more likely to reach these objectives. Second, your risk and mitigation analysis can really come directly from the hypothesis that we were showing at the bottom of the previous slide. When the hypotheses are not uh, fulfilled, then you may have some risk. Hence, you can already identify what kind of problems you may find along the way and anticipate it and hopefully address it before it happens. Finally, your monitoring and evaluation and your impact assessment can follow through that process. That will help you understand what the bottlenecks are, address it on time, and hopefully avoid major issues. Now, let's apply our theory of change to the case of Ibli insurance. So you can define the activities with, which can basically be providing the insurance, offering it to the pastoralists. And in that case, there were also discount coupons to stimulate the demand. You can think of the final impacts, which is basically to get a sustainable increase in livestock production, better food security, resilience, and less poverty. In the way to getting these impacts, you would need first to get the outputs, which is that first the pastoralists buy Ibli, that some payouts are triggered when the droughts occur, and the pastoralists start understanding better the product. This is the first level of effect that you expect directly after the activities. The next stage would be that they really start having a sustained use of the insurance, that they increase their investments in livestock, less distress for animals and um, they have more income from their livestock. All this is already, one can think of it as impact, but it's more short term, more immediately tied to the use of the insurance, but it's already a good sign if these things appear, but it's not yet the final impact. Then you think of your hypothesis. So what could prevent these activities like offering the insurance from uh, the output, like pastoralists buying the Ibli, for, for example. First, drought may not be a major concern for these pastoralists. They may not understand well this insurance, or they may just not have enough interest or an ability to pay for this insurance. All of these would be constraints that would prevent the output from happening. Now, if these output happen, you think the same. What prevents the outcome from uh, happening out of these outputs? It could be, for example, that there is a high basis risk. Basis risk is a mismatch between the payments triggered by the insurance and the actual droughts and moments when payments would be needed. When there is a mismatch, that's the basis risk, and that could make the farmers, the pastoralists, not want these insurance anymore. And they may not be better off with the insurance. You need the farmers to reach a stable ability and willingness to pay so that they continue, they have the sustained use of the insurance all the time. Okay? And and that the risk uh, needs to be reduced, and that should translate into more investments uh, so that we have some of these outcomes happening. And for the final uh, impacts to happen, then there is a need for long-term behavior change from the pastoralists. Now that they know that the risk is reduced, they should be willing to invest more and adapt in, in that way. And on the institutional side, you need the supply to be consistent uh, from the insurers. Uh, so once we finished this theory of change, we have a much better overview of what are the main risks for this project? How will these impacts occur? And for example, maybe it seems like not understanding well the product is the major kind of risk together with in institutional challenges, like an insurance that is not very well designed and has a high basis risk, or insurers that cannot stay over time, and these all these changes in behavior from the pastoralists who understand now that they are better protected and hence they will invest more. This is there is a set of changes that need to happen and that will help you think of what kind of risks are related to this project. Now comes the question 
of how this theory of change would help you in your impact assessment. But first, impact assessment is about measuring impacts, and the theory of change pushes you to define well these impacts. Second, imagine that you haven't reached well your impacts, you would want to know where it failed, and the causal chain will give you key elements of where it may have failed along the way. For this purpose, it's important that you define your indicators at all levels of the causal chain. So you use this causal chain to think of what you will want to measure in your monitoring, in the surveys that you will implement, so that you can identify where it may have failed along the way. Finally, in the case where you think that one of the hypotheses or conditions is really important and can be a key determinant of whether the project is successful or not, then you could design a learning study where you add a treatment arm, another initiative, that helps address this problem, this condition. And you see whether the treatment works better, the impacts are better reached when you have this additional treatment. Let's try to apply this logic to the Ibli example. So we had a set of activities uh, like the insurance co company offers the insurance to the pass release and the discount coupons. So the indicators would be pass release to whom the insurance was introduced as a presence of the supply and the number of discounts that were the coupons that were provided. Then you have we have the output indicators. So one may think of the number of pass release who purchase Ibli, where the payouts were triggered or measures of learning and understanding. So all this can come from a mix of some administrative data, in this case maybe from the insurer, if there is some agreement to share the data, that could provide a lot of information, but you would have to also collect data through survey in most cases, because you need to go beyond just what you get from some kind of monitoring data and administrative data. You actually want to know whether the farmers or the pastoralists are better off, hence you need to go beyond this and collect additional data in most cases. A, the adoption and this adoption pattern starts being an, an important medium-term outcome, a livestock of the pastoralist and income from livestock should be collected as well if you want to follow these increased household income from livestock, for example. And finally, if you want the final impact, you can get asset consumption, nutrition, poverty reduction could come from the consumption measures, etc. So you will need the, it's typical that the initial measures could come from some monitoring data, administrative data, and the more we go to the impacts, the more you tend to need your own uh, survey data to get some better measures of these. In fact, the hypotheses that you have also help you think of the indicators and data that you need to collect. In what way? For example, if you consider that drought needs to be a major risk for the livestock producers for this project to work, then you could, for example, have some qualitative work that helps you identify this risk and confirm this hypothesis. If they need to have the possibility to buy the insurance initially, then cash constraint may be an important problem. You mentioned the basis risk, then you may want to know about the correlation between the livestock losses that are observed through data collection and payments that were made. Are they well correlated? That would be good. If they are not, then that's a risk, a basis risk. Uh, you may collect data about risk aversion of the pass release to understand whether that played a, that is an important determinant of adoption, or uh, and you will also look at long term follow up because you know that your impacts are also very long term question adapting their behaviors. Maybe you want to also have other questions on how they change their behaviors so that you can observe these kind of hypotheses. Uh, all this helps you design your study and helps you identify where it went wrong along the way because you also collected this kind of data. Finally, suppose that you think that having sufficient initial interest and the ability and willingness to pay for this insurance, the EBLE insurance, if you think that this is an important constraint, then you may think, okay, why don't we add an intervention as uh, it could be an intervention that is for everyone so that you solve it, or it could be an additional treatment arm so that you test whether this was an in that case, the coupons could be a way of reacting to this. Okay, I think initially farmers don't know about it. They are not necessarily super interested. They may not have the cash for it. The coupons will provide this subsidy that allows more learning, allows discovering the insurance, 
Hence, that's an example of an additional intervention that reacts to a potential risk or limitation, either applied to everyone or randomly assigned to some of the cluster lists so that you test whether these two points actually make a difference before upscaling this and eventually thinking of uh, applying this to everyone once you have learned whether this is useful or not. First, it applies not only to a project, but any form of activity for which you think it has a specific purpose, some impact that it aims to reach, and then you can think of this causal chain from the initial activities that it may have until the impact. So that is a very broad concept. It could be more challenging to apply it, and in particular to test the theory of change if you think of things like upstream research. This has a very long causal chain and sometimes uncertain where the research is done because one thinks that it should have some impact. But these are more difficult to track because it's a long way from producing the innovations up to all the way to uh, obtaining the final impacts. And now, in practice, you also have nested theories of change. Let's think, for example, if you have a big initiative and within this initiative you have various projects, then you can have a theory of change for the general initiative on what are the impacts, what kind of, of activities it has, and how it aims to reach it. And then within this, you could have many theories of change for each one of the projects so that that gets more detailed and that really thinks project by project about how the, the causal chain would be for these various activities. A final comment, life is not linear and your theory of change needs not be either. It doesn't have to be a simple line like, like it is represented here. And also, in some cases, you actually have a loops. Think of this, you have this farmers that are these pastoralists that are buying the insurance, then they're learning, then they experiment with the payouts, and that cycle happens sometimes many years before it moves on into the outcome and impacts that are more long term. So you have some loops within the theory of change, you could have multiple branches and a more complex theory of change than the one that we represent here, but this was a simple pedagogical example that then can be adapted to every project and needs. Thank you for your attention. I hope that this was useful to you to think of the theory of change and how it may be useful to apply it for impact assessment.